Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. For steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me.
We brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We remain standing for the prayers for the reception of the body. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to you, to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, but he will raise him in perfection to perfection in the company of the saints. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Ernest. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. The hymn, How Great Thou Art, How Great Thou Art.
Please be seated for the first Bible lesson. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Shall we stand?
please be seated. The eulogy will be offered by Annette Thomas and Vincent Smith. Hello everyone. On behalf of my family and I, I'd like to begin by thanking everyone here today and for those who have sent their condolences from the UK, USA and Barbados. A special thank you to our Aunt Jim, Uncle Keith, Cousin Whitfield for always being there for the family and looking after Mum, going to the hospital visiting Dad. We are so lucky to have a great family unit who is always there for us. We really do appreciate it. Also, a very special thank you to Wesley and Andrew for helping our dad when he wasn't well, taking him to the hospital, staying with him, and visiting when he can. We are forever grateful for your help, as well as assisting mum when we weren't here. You're all great friends. Thank you so much. All right. Dad, you left us too soon. From being such a fit man, always in the garden, keeping yourself busy, to now leaving this earth suddenly. It came as a big surprise. We are devastated and still find it hard to believe you're gone. We love you and we will miss you so much. However, however we will now know that you are no longer in pain and in a better place. We promise to continue looking after our mum, just like the way you took care of her every day. We will forever carry your spirit of kindness and calm in our hearts. You have our thoughts so much, you're in our thoughts so much. And for that, we are truly grateful. Dad always walked around with a smile and his face was always known to everyone. No one knew when, what Dad was thinking and you never knew whether it was good or bad, just know that he always kept his comments to himself and only spoke when he felt it was necessary. Dad was a very easy going, easy to talk to and a great listener. The best advice always came from him as a father and even better husband. He looked after his family the best way ever and even a better husband. He could and always, as a family, we truly appreciate it. Dad was born on the 22nd of October, 1939, the son of late James Smith, and mother, Mrs. Lavinia Thomas from Spa Hill, St. Joseph. Dad left Barbados to come and start a, start a life in the UK with his best friend Marcus in August 1960, at the age of 21. He got a job in London transport as a train driver and a few years later moved up as a manager where he worked for 36 years. Dan met mum in 1961, had their first child together, Anna, and got married in 1969. He then went to have two more children with mum, Maxine and Vincent, and took on three stepchildren, Emerson, Glenda, and John. In 1996, Dad took an early retirement as he always wanted to come back to Barbados. 
He asks our brother Emerson to find him a nice spot of land and started building the first dream house. Dada Mun then returned to Barbados in 1998 and was one of the first people to li live in Cottage Heights, St. George, along with numerous cows grazing and surrounding the house. Dan was very house proud and really enjoyed living in Cottage Heights where he met some really good friends. Dan leaves behind four children, three stepchildren, 19 great-grandchildren and 16 great-grandchildren. His legacy will always live on. We uh, would like to finish our today's friends saying we, we cherish, cherish the memories I had, I had with, with our father, father. and now he is smiling, smiling down on, on all, all of us now. Right now. Thank, you. Thank you all. The 23rd Psalm will now be read by Mr. John Payne, and that will be followed by a poem offered by Katrina Thomas. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore, can I lack nothing? He shall lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me in the path. Sorry. He leads me beside the still water. He shall comfort my soul and bring me forth in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Now prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. To those I love and those who love me, when I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with tears. Be happy that we had so many years. I gave you my love, but you can only guess how much you gave to me in happiness. I, gave, I thank you for the love you each have shown, but now it's time I traveled alone. So grieve a little while for me, if you must, and let your grief be comforted by trust. It's only for a while, then we must part so bless the memories within your heart. It won't be far away, for life goes on. If you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see me or touch me, I'll be near. And if you listen with your heart, you will hear. All of my love around you, soft and clear. And when you must come this way alone, I'll greet you with a smile and welcome you home.
I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Words found in the first lesson read for this service, taken from Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born, and a time to die. Most, if not all of us, have heard the saying that there are only two things in this world of which we are certain, taxes and death. More often than not, we have to pay the debt for both of them. When we go into the supermarket, and before we make certain purchases, we search for the best, by best date, or the expiry date, especially if we go into the chiller section, or the milk section, the section with the perishable goods. We look to see when it, this particular item will expire, and if it is too close to expiration, we don't buy it. But not so with any of us in this chapel this afternoon. None of us have an expiry date written on our foreheads. None of us know when. We know that we will, but none of us know when and how. None of us have a best before date stamped somewhere on our bodies. The Bible puts it another way. The Bible says two women shall be in the field and one shall be taken and the other one left. And so it is on occasions like these, we are all forced to confront the reality of our own mortality. The reality that never mind how young or bright or healthy we are, we will die. As a clergy person, and I, and I am sure that most Bajans make a habit of looking into the Sunday newspapers and particularly at the obituaries. They want to see if anyone that they know has passed. And more and more, it seems to me that when I look into the Sunday obituaries, it seems to me more and more that younger people are dying younger and younger and younger. And the older people seem to be holding on just a little while longer. And so it does not matter what age you are or where you went to school or where you live. The reality of the situation is that we will all die. And when we die then, what happens afterwards? What happens? What's happened to our brother here? Yes, we know we have short few minutes ago we were able to look at his body. But that's not really him. That's a shell of what he was. That's what we know. So what really happened to our brother? Well, if you were living in the old and ancient days of Egypt, when the pharaohs or the rulers or the kings of Egypt died, they were buried in tombs. The pharaohs were alive, but all their wives who were buried with them were very much alive. Pharaohs were dead, but they were alive. In the days of old, in early America, the Native Americans, when they died in battle, were buried with their horses because it was felt that they would need their horses in the coming world. So what happens to us? We still haven't answered the questions. The Bible says to us, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Naked we have come to our mother's womb, and the only reason that we are dressed in the casket is for the sake of decorum and modesty. But we can take nothing out. Because it's of no use to us. Anything that we may have had is of no use to us once we have left this world. The only thing that is left of us and for us is how we are remembered. The only thing that is left of us and for us is how we are remembered. So I don't care if you have two houses or three motor cars. I don't care if you have a collection of whatever it is that's very expensive and you're very proud of. I don't care how many dresses you've got in the closet. One young lady told me she has 60 pairs of shoes. And I said to her, but you only got two feet. <clears throat> and it is true that these 60 pairs of shoes are totally of useless if she were to pass from this world. She may be able to use a few of them now. But what is she going to do with them when she has passed? What happens to you then if perchance, by accident, you were to leave this world tonight? tomorrow. How would people remember you? Because that's the only thing left of you, you know, your reputation. 
your, the memories which other people have of you. How would you be remembered? Would you be remembered as someone who is arrogant or critical, very critical of everybody? Would you be remembered as somebody who really could not care about anybody else besides yourself, selfish? Would you be remembered rather as a kind-hearted and generous person, someone who was always willing to help? How would you be remembered? Many of us live different lives, different lives. We live strange lives. We wear masks, and the mask that we wear in front of one set of people is not the mask that the other people see. For instance, the kind of person that you are at home may be a totally different person to how you are at work. And your colleagues may not recognize you as the same face that you present to your boss. Because you want to get in good with the boss and make sure you get a raise and that everything goes well. So you give your boss one face and you give your colleagues another face. And a totally different face to your neighbors, people who live on your street, people who you interact with. So you see one person can have several different faces, but which is the real face? My friends, at the end of the day, it does not matter who we think we are. But at the end of the day, it is how we treat those who we call family, those whom we call loved ones, those who, whom we relate. Many of us live in a house with other people, but the house is not a home. And even though the other people may be family, we do not treat them as family. We treat them as furniture. When we leave home on mornings, we may say, I'm gone or goodbye but we expect them to be there when we come back. And one day, when we come back home, they're not there. Or something has happened and life has changed. What I would like to suggest to you, my friends, is that we take care of those persons we call family. Our brother has left his treasure behind. Our brother has left his wife behind. I know she has family because I have seen them here today. And I trust and hope that the love which he had for her, they will exhibit and show as she continues to be without him. And so the last chapter in the, life, in the earthly life of our brother has been written. The final line is in place and the book is about to be closed. But not so for us. For us, life is moving on, not going backwards or standing still. Perhaps it is time to stand still and take stock of where we are and where we are going and who we really are. To look around us at the people we call family, friends and colleagues and our relationships with them. To make wrong things right and good things even better. For Holy Scripture tells us that we do not know what time the Son of Man will come or what time he will send for us. We talk about Jesus and the second coming, but chances are he's going to send for us long before he comes. What then? In the book of Psalms we read, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And yes, I saw tears a short while ago. I saw people sobbing, I saw people crying, I saw people sorrowing and grieving. They are tears because you cannot live with and for a person for most, if not all of your life, and do not feel pangs of sorrow and grief. And these are the pangs of sorrow which we feel for our brother, and they are real. They will go away eventually, they will become a little less, a little, they will become a little less poignant. They will become a little less more difficult to deal with. The pain will not be as sharp and as hard, because time has a way of helping us to get over things like these. But the joy that comes up in the morning is the joy of knowing that our brother lived a good life. That he lived a useful life. That he lived a loving life. That he was loved and he was loving. The joy of knowing that we believe as Christian people for when we close our eyes on this word, this physical word, we will open them in a spiritual word. And so for our brother, there is no longer the pain of this earthly life. There is no longer the growing old. There is no longer the uncertainties. He is now in a spiritual place. He has closed his eyes on this earthly life. He has opened them on a spiritual dimension. 
But as Christian people, we do not say goodbye. We never say goodbye. Because scripture tells us that in our Father's house there are many rooms. We believe that our brother, even now, is in one of those rooms. And we believe too that when we make our own transition, we shall meet him there. In our Father's house, in the many rooms. And I leave you with the words of a well-known hymn. There is a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. And let light perpetual, may he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Father God, we thank you for the many blessings which you give to our brother. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of life and love and living. We thank you, Lord, for all the times, the good times we have shared together, and yes, the challenging times as well. We ask you, gracious God, that you will continue to bless his family, to grant them strength in their times of bereavement, in the understanding and the knowledge that with you all things are possible, and that these two will pass, this, these feelings of sorrow, and even though we will always remember him and love him and share these memories, but one day we will understand, we will see more clearly, and we will understand that he is in a better place. These things, O oh Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And today, we, together we offer the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We stand now for our closing hymn. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer.
Turn your music on. Prayer. Hello. Let us pray. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers, like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts, in your mercy hear our prayer forgive us our sins and at our last hour let us not fall away from you ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our lord jesus christ we commend to almighty god our brother and we commit his body to the ground earth to earth ashes to ashes dust to dust and we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. But when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen.
was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind.
hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain, the old rugged cross.
Shall we bow our heads for a closing prayer? Let us pray. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen.